So broadly speaking, environmental health considers the impact of anything outside the body on human health and disease. So it's really focused on the relationships between people and the environment, and it's the key part of any uh, comprehensive public health system. It's uh, important to understand that environmental exposures can be both direct as well as indirect in nature. Uh, direct exposures would include things like chemicals in the environment, radiation, um, exposure to biological agents or um, other air pollution. Um, whereas indirect effects that tend to occur more broadly and can might be social, cultural, um, psychological, or physical in nature. So they may be related to housing, um, energy use, land use, or transportation. Um, climate change is an environmental exposure that can have both indirect as well as direct effects on the environment. Uh, on our health, I'm sorry. This CDC graphic illustrates the connections between climate change impacts, rising temperatures, sea level rise and associated flooding, um, and extreme weather, and the, the broader public health implications, which are numerous. So here in Westchester County, we already see such impacts. Um, this is a map of heat vulnerability in Westchester County that was developed by the New York State Department of Health, and it reflects the urban heat island effect, uh, which is when urban areas retain, they tend to retain more heat because of their, you know, the, the heat trapping materials that are concentrated there, concrete and asphalt, and they're also their relative lack of nature, so trees and open space. So the populations that would be vulnerable to these heat impacts would include those with uh, pre-existing uh, respiratory or cardiovascular conditions, seniors, uh, children, athletes, um, outdoor workers, and the homeless population. But really it's expected to impact everybody because everybody breathes air, <laughs> eats food, and uh, drinks water. So, um, And then to address the disparities uh, uh, across Westchester County. When it comes to environmental hazards, people tend to think of, some of these, if some of you have seen this before, um, people tend to think about chemical exposures. Um, and in Westchester, we do have our fair share of chemical exposures, um, but they're, they're located pretty ubiquitously throughout the county, though there are concentrations in some of the lower income areas. Um, one useful way to approach the impact of environmental, of assessing the environmental exposure on health, whether they're chemical exposures, air pollution, or climate impacts, is through uh, social determinants of health lens. So um, the CDC definition of social determinants of health are, is the conditions under which people live, work, learn, and play. And it's been estimated that 80% of a person's health status is determined by these social determinant, these different factors, whereas 20% um, is driven by actual direct health care. So when we see then disparities in health outcomes, this is adult hospitalizations for circulatory conditions. Um, across Westchester County that were deemed preventable. When we see such disparities, we can begin to ask questions about what kind of direct or indirect environmental exposures may have helped lead to these health outcomes. Um, for example, access to health care, access to air conditioning during an extreme heat event, um, or living next to an intersection of, say, a major trucking route, um, can have a profound effect on a person with underlying cardiovascular disease, which may lead to something like this. So social determinants of health end up being factors that can help make an individual or a family more or less resilient to um, any kind of shock, right, whether it's climate or air pollution or coronavirus. <laughs> um, it's a framework that helps to assess vulnerability in general 
and uh, assess cumulative risk from, from multiple stressors, leading to sort of more individual or family resilience. <laughs>